Russia Vankers! Hello, Vankers! How is everybody doing? How are you doing? How is this week? You know, there's just so much happening on track you yeah. know there's just this week it's just this week we're just gonna i hate this week we're this week we're just gonna stick to what happens on track because what happens on track is so riveting and <laughs> exciting and that's all that it should be about because because yeah. just what happens on track that's just what it's about right because at the end of the day we, all we care about is what happens between those white lines dude you want us to talk about what happens on track do do something. Yeah. Do fucking do something. You know what the irony is, though? You know what the irony is of, oh, oh, is it hard going into your place of business and people asking you things, asking you questions that you don't want to answer, uh -huh. making like may, asking you questions that make you uncomfortable at the at your place of business that right. has nothing to do with your job right. that sucks for you. Right. Now you know what it feels like a to be to, a tiny, to, to, taste. To, tiny taste of what it might be to be a woman. Or someone who's being treated unfairly in any workplace. Right. That's just a just a window. Yes. Anyway. Oh. But so, yeah, I oh, know it's the yeah. worst week of Formula One. <laughs> and this is why I hate this week. Yeah. It's because you don't know, get all this news that's yeah. terrible. Right. And, and they're every, but everyone's like, but Ali Behrman though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone's like these star baby birds in this Ali Behrman little pipette. Yes. And that's all anyone wants to talk about. Not the fact. That like the best team is imploding, right. but still managing to beat the <laughs> shit out of everybody. Like w like both hands behind their back from a chemistry standpoint, <laughs> just with their legs now just kicking. Right, they're right, just right. kicking. Yeah, and and they're still managing to massacre everybody. Right, while they're massacring themselves. Right, and then, and then and then <laughs> the the head of the FIA yes. is allegedly. <laughs> corrupt as shit. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he's been meddling in races. Yeah. He didn't want to he didn't want to um uh certify the, the Las Vegas GP which is a war crime. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. um you might as well declare war on the United States of America. Uh-huh. And then finally He's and and he's hugging Christian Horner in public, right. which is not his job. Right, it is not his job. Okay, here's the thing, right? Everyone's talking about transparency on, yes. on this issue. Yes, everyone's yes. talking about trans transparency, transparency, transparency. You know, I've asked around people that have real jobs. Right, right, right. Red Bull is a privately owned company. They have yes. no shareholders. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have pri it's privately held. There's no stock. There's no right. There's no like meeting of share. So, I mean. Corporations are going to corporate, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're going to. They're, they did an investigation. They made their decision. They're not like. If it wasn't like a famous sports team, we would have never heard of this. This would have been an internal thing that was handled, and then he would have gotten. He got. He would have been cleared, suspended, or you know, made to get you know classes. Right? Those are kind of the, right, right, the, the, right. The, yeah, right? yeah. You the do. reason the f right that like it's very, like corporations are not like oh yeah come look at our internal investigation. Yeah, no yeah, corporation yeah. does that. <laughs> right. The reason you have the FIA yes is to watch the watchman is to protect yes. the integrity of the sport. Right. Right. Because you can't be mad at a wolf for behaving like a wolf. Right. That's like that's the, that's how corporations. Act. Right. 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 You know this isn't. He wasn't tried by his peers, right? He was tried by an internal event. And this is how these things work. They're yeah. private, you know? So, I mean, that, like, that, it's not Red Bull's job to stop behaving like how every fucking corporation in America operates. It's disappointing, but what's really disappointing, I think, yeah. is that the FIA has, has, has shown no interest. Right. They stick their nose in so many things that we don't care about them sticking their nose in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. decertifying the, the, um, Vegas GP, but they won't stick their nose in this. Right. When people are asking for them. Well, because e even more <laughs> corrupt than maybe an organization does seem to be the FIA led by Mohammed Ben Salam because he's out here just being like, he's a made guy. <laughs> I mean, he's out here just being like, yeah, but he's that's that's this is my. I mean, this 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 you know, it's interesting because right, remember when it was like the. You know, they he got on Susie and Toto about the conflict right. of interest, right? Right. Right. We're, the, we're being hypocritical because we we love that. <laughs> well, we but well, here's the thing. 
that was like and that was kind of entertaining because it was like it felt like it was within the like Sporting. bounds of the sport, sport right. that people were trying to get ahead in the sport and potentially like using their connections within the sport. But they talk about like the conflicts of interest. At what point is Mohammed bin Salam's relationship with Christian Horner and hugging him and telling Max that he's got to back him? At what point is that, that a, a conflict, conflict of, of interest, interest in terms of him looking into this? Because it is true. I mean, and the, half these guys get jobs at these teams after they're done. Right. Everyone who who works for the FIA. Stefano Domenicali worked yes. for the, you know was the head of the FIA. Well, no, he worked for no, Ferrari. He, then he then when, he was then he went to the, the FIA. FIA and now, now he's the head of F1. Yes. So <laughs> it's like this this. <laughs> world this cesspool of f1 that with people in their relationships and their you know their their unspoken fucking agreements and then now all of a but sudden Brian, why are you complaining oliver bearman got seventh <laughs> in the second fastest car he's cute what? he's a cutie <laughs> don't think about any of that he's a cute kid don't think about all these drivers pulling a mat right <laughs> you know that on all, all their fans yes <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, yeah. You know that Ollie Berman's from, he's from Essex. He doesn't, uh, Spanners was talking about this. He doesn't sound like he's from he Essex. He doesn't sound like he's from Essex, love, but you know, he's fucking from the place <laughs> where everyone from looking the fucking Love Island's from, yeah? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're an Essex boy, aren't you? And he's tall. He's, he's a tall bird. He's a tall, <laughs> he's tall. He's got great, uh, you know, he's one of those tall ones yeah. that wouldn't have to speak. Right. And all the women would just be like, he's got great eye contact. Oh my God, his eye contact is like next level. <laughs> he's like, really? Like, there's something about him. I don't know what it is. So he's yeah. got a great eye contact. No, that, I, you know, again, that was fun today. Because it was that was the only interesting thing that happened on track but today. But let's not yes, right. go crazy here. Liam Lawson is like, does nobody remember I beat my teammate? Right. I ate Qatar. Yeah. I scored points in a shit box, Alpha Tauri. Let's also let's also remember that Nick DeVries <laughs> I was about to say. came in in Monza. Beat Latifi. Beat his teammate. Almost scored points. Or did he score did points? He, score he points. scored a point in a fucking Williams. Yes. And everyone was like, That oh was my. a more impressive performance yes. than this. Yes. And people and people deemed him a god. Right. Deemed him like, oh, he. Of course, you gotta sign this we kid. Gotta and we- remember, look, Ferrari is the second fastest car on the grid right now. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. where Leclerc finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also want to take a moment. I also want to take a moment. Yeah. To just because this is what Carlos Sainz fans would have done. Yes. Just take a moment to appreciate that Leclerc beat him this weekend, because Carlos Sainz fans don't seem to care whether whether good luck happens or not. Uh-huh. If, if, you know, if Leclerc's brakes fail, if his car blows up. Carlos Sainz fans celebrate. They go, oh, Carlos Sainz beat him. So I think as a Leclerc fan, yeah. I can celebrate Charles Leclerc getting the better of Sainz this weekend. <laughs> he definitely got the better of Sainz yeah. this weekend. Oh, you know, I'm, is it is it Leclerc's fault that he has got a better appendix? <laughs> No, did you see? Did you see the pic that Science posted? Everyone was sad to see him not race. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's so sad." I'm like, "Dude, he's so much better out of the car in the car. This guy looks better in a fucking post-op. Yeah. He looks better <laughs> than any of us pre-op. Yeah. Like, at, like getting ready for a red carpet with the whole team. Yeah, yeah. His hair, dude. He was fucking high on oxy or whatever the fuck he was high on. He looked beautiful. Him sitting, him sitting in the bed. Papa Science there, and then the throwback tip pick to oh, when Papa incredible. Science got his appendix taken out. I was like, okay, Just Carlos two Sainz. great, beautiful men with shitty appendixes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, just absolute the, the these the capital M men with capital A appendixes, <laughs> absolutely ready to burst at any given moment. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, there's oh man, there's just. That was, yeah, I mean, that was fucking crazy. I mean, obviously, who gives a fuck about this race, right? Max wins. I mean, there, we'll get into some of the stuff, but yeah, the 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 real topic is is everything that's going on at Red Bull. We 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 did an episode on it on the Patreon. You can check that out. But what's interesting now is that like this situation, w- which was kind of behind closed doors. We were waiting for a thing to happen. We got an answer. Then this leak happened. And then the people within the organization seem hell-bent on the, its own destruction. <laughs> they seem, everyone in the organization seems hell-bent on just tearing this whole fucking thing down. 
And it, it is. Thank a, God for it. Though. I mean, well, <laughs> thank God for thank God for the public warfare. We have something to talk about. Well, we got something to talk about. I mean, it's it, you, you know, that, in, that's uh, by the way, that's divorced from the, right. The accusations is Christian Horner are just a cudgel in which they are. Bu- they're using that right. as a cudgel to in yes. this war. Yes, that is that is that is preceded these accusations. Yes. And, you know, when this thing is tied up and what however it's tied up. Yeah. We'll continue. I yes. Think. Um, and it is. A, and, it, and it is. You know, it's interesting because now there is this spotlight on the sport. There are articles being written in 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 organizations and, and publications that never talk about Formula One. Vox came out with an article. Really? The Times is reporting on this shit. It's it is a I mean, it, and Lewis said it. Lewis was like, it's a really bad look for the sport. It's setting a precedent for like, what is this sport? What are we about? What do we stand for? All this stuff. And they're asking now all of the drivers to kind of weigh in on what's going on. Obviously, the we're assuming, we don't know for sure, but it is assumed that the woman who brought forth these claims has been uh, suspended. suspended from her job. Well, do you want to go through the week, though? It was like, yes. It was like la- last week it was, the week leading up to the race, it was, Max might go to Mercedes, right? That was first, right? And then it was, we, it was, and then it we was, did a Patreon, be like, "Holy shit, let's talk about that for an hour." Right. Well, Joss was seen talking to Toto, yes, right? You know, maybe and Yas said the thing that put it out in the open. Yes, Yoss and was then like, Yoss, Christian can't. Yes. This, can't, I sorry, I didn't even go back for it. So first, it was the first shot that made this like, okay, we can talk about this publicly because they're fucking talking about right, it. right, right, yeah, right. Everyone's like, we think there might be a proxy war, and Yas like, yep. There's a proxy war. <laughs> yes. Yas was like, yeah, Christian can't be a part of this team anymore. Right. It's toxic, whatever. Yes. He acts like the victim. I, I, but I, yes, right. He acts like the victim, but he's the one that's fucking everything up. Yes. An iconic statement from Yas Verstappen, <laughs> given his own personal history. history. Yeah. For, for, to, to hold the moral high ground, is an, it, it's just an interesting thing for a guy from... In, I don't in, know if he was holding moral... He was just saying this is bad for the team. Right. I, that was No, he actually didn't mention any morality to it i mean he was kind of he like he's amoral. acting he's saying he's acting like the victim when he caused it so he's even used he's just using that type of vernacular in a way that is kind of like interesting but that could speak to other things right that could speak sure to, but I don't, he didn't he didn't he didn't say oh this guy behaved inappropriately i'm appalled right right, right. you know what i mean he didn't yeah, speak yeah. about the incident specifically right but he was just speaking like he was speaking more from like a vibe standpoint so. yeah yeah sure um or anyway, and then Max, then he was seen talking to Toto. Yes. Then Max was like, my dad's not a fucking liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And he says, no cap. No fam. cap. No cap, fam. Then was it, then was the lady, in, uh, was the lady suspended that made the accusation? I think, yeah, then, yes, yeah, she was suspended. Then, so now there's, you And know, then Helmet was right. being investigated. Well, then, well, then Helmet, from what I understand, Helmet asked the press to ask him about <laughs> him maybe being suspended because he was... No way! Yes, yeah. He goes, ask me about my suspension. Yes, yes, yes. Because I think there was maybe he was hearing that that might be a case. He was like, let me get this in the press that I might be suspended. Let me let me put some... Let me fan these flames. Oh it's interesting God. that also because there is a bit of the vibe where this whole... The whole F1 paddock is kind of like, why is the press... Depressing. <laughs> why is why the pre- is the press doing their job? Why are you guys just why you gotta ask all these questions when it's like these um, guys do this shit all the time? They plant stories in the press. I mean, remember, remember when Peter why Windsor? Why these guys run with the things we hand to them? Remember when <laughs> remember when Peter Windsor said that Alex Albon was offered his contract at yeah. Red Bull, Albon. and then and then the rumors were that Albon like tried to have people saying that in the press yes. in order to like give him more leverage in negotiating. Yeah. So it's like you know they use the and it's also one of these things where it's like you know the the success of the sport has. Not much to do with what happens on fucking track, dude. <laughs> Not this year. I mean, any year. The whole point and the whole success of Drive to Survive, the whole new fandom, the whole reason why these guys are now capital F famous yes. and they're all they're also capital R rich even yeah. if they're fucking like not that good <laughs> Alex Albon has a fucking sneaker line <laughs> because of people being interested in the off track shit yeah. so yes what happened this week was that in in the light of all of this now all of the drivers are being asked questions 
being asked to comment, and every single one of them is pulling a Matt Rife. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're all just kind of saying like, why you why you why are you asking me about this stuff? Not yeah. it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah, exactly. It, it's like I um, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's a tough needle for some of these guys to thread uh-huh. because they w- they just want the red. They Red Bull owns right. one fifth of the grid, right? But there's a way to, you know, like your James Valzes, who are like, I yes. don't really know what's going on. I know as much as you do, but yes. we need to do better as a sport just yes. to make people feel comfortable. Yes, in in and and you know anybody feeling uncomfortable is anathema to what I'm about. Yes, and and condemn an environment that would make someone feel like they needed to complain right and not really speak to the to to what actually happened right you know there's a way there's a way to and and what's crazy is these guys have so much money Mm -hmm. and their image is everything why they couldn't fucking there are people that exist right solely to help them like lewis came out with like a perfect statement well lewis also like has a better ability to talk about these things because lewis yeah. also i think is just like more intelligent when it comes to like these types of matters and and understanding like why this is important and you know the depths of this than these other drivers these other these other kids like yeah. they like lewis understands it lewis and you know it's interesting because i've i've <laughs> I've recently, I've recently had some conversations with some family members of mine where I've been, been like trying to I- I- explain to them like the depths of like why a thing is not okay, and then I've kind of met with like, well then I okay, well you know like I they don't want to fully go there or understand it. And I think that like some of these guys don't, they, they just don't, they don't want to go there. They don't want to go there. They don't want to like. They don't want to. It's well, it's, they live in a bubble. They live in a bubble. They live in a bubble, and usually, yeah. Like here's the thing. If you ask them about anything that's going on in the world, yes, I'm sure they would disappoint you. Yes, because they don't. They're not up on it. No, they don't yeah. read about it. They're in their own little. They live in fucking Monaco, which is not a real place. Yes, right. It is not a real place, and they and they're focused on their body, their diet, their driving. Yeah, their Instagram, and that's and and i'm sure that i'm sure you know just maintaining that level of fitness and that level of um and that they, level of skill is is very time consuming and and on top of it they like they i it's like so and then they live these little like these these, these very specific little lives it's like a high school forever it's a high school forever, forever right and then it's like kind of that's why like lewis has like gdi energy because lewis is like had the had the audacity to he like wasn't always be like a person but i know he but, he, but then like he wound that. up yes. being a person in the world and trying to like under be a force for good but beyond that just be a more well-rounded full person that i think some of these guys like have any interest in being i think that they kind of it's like no i live my per you know no my 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 whole life and i went to formula three and then i went to formula two and now i'm in formula one and blah blah blah, blah and they don't they don't wanna and th- this is i'm not i'm really not excusing them it is a flaw in that in in that type of person and in that type of personality to not understand the gravity of this and not understand why it's important. But to- I don't think it's limited to gender politics in the workplace. I think no, no, just it's completely, not. I just think it's like a, a, a blanket thing. It just so happens that this, that this important topic has been f- thrust in their faces. Right. Right. Whereas like other topics, you know, like, you know, wage inequality or, or anything that's going on in the countries that they visit. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never gets brought up to them. But this right. has just gotten so hot, right? Temperature wise, yes. That they they've been forced to answer about answer about it, and it's burst that bubble. Yeah. That, that almost is seems to be impermeable most of the time. You know, even when they're like racing in a place where there's missiles, like they're never really asked about like right about you know. <laughs> so what's going on with these Houthi rebels? Right, like, right, do you know right. what I'm saying? Like they never, it's never really right. There's, they're always protected from having to say anything political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I do think that like the world of Formula One is v- vulnerable right now because the the se- this season's gonna suck. 
Max is dominating in a way that is like this. What's happening on track is boring as fuck. Mm-hmm. And what's happening off track is going to turn people off of the sport. And it's like for the people, for all the, you know, people interested, this, this, this newfound, you know, love and wave of people being obsessed with Formula it's One. It's not like the NFL. It can't survive. It's not just a foregone conclusion. Yeah. And Formula One, the NFL or- doesn't seem to matter whether it's CTE or any of these stories. But the NFL these- is more; it's more. It, listen, and, and, and the on the field product is better. Well, y- yes, that's that's true. But also, in the steeped world that it, the NFL lives in, it goes deep. These are these are shallow waters yeah. of the new fandom of Formula yeah. One. This isn't just th- like these roots are just taking hold, yeah. and I think it's important. That like the formula, like that the powers that be at Formula One, make sure that this is done correctly because right now it's not being done correctly, and there is a real, th- there's a real yeah. threat that like people are gonna be like, well, fuck this. Why would I pay attention to this shit? Yeah. Why would I, like, a, nothing exciting is happening <laughs> on track. Right. And b, what's happening off track? All the like fun, dr- the, the, like it, this, it, it's like. There was an entertainment aspect to like the fun drama happening off track. This isn't fun drama. You know what is fun though to think about? What? <laughs> if helmet did leak, yes. isn't that just impressive that an eighty three year old guy can figure out how to like work a Google Drive? Oh, if that if he sent the email <laughs> and he sent it from an anonymous. I mean, think thing. about an eighty three year old man. <laughs> how many eighty three year olds can work a cell phone? Let alone right. handle a tranche of uh, right. Uh, well, and, and and listen, we don't know if those if those texts are real. Right? Can you imagine if he if he fabricated those? How <laughs> impressive that is! Well, let's remember that. <laughs> remember, remember when we had um, Engine Mode Eleven on? Right. And he was like, Helmet could barely like work the printer. <laughs> So maybe that's evidence that exonerates. Him. Well, it exonerates him maybe from that, but the, yeah. but whether there's other whether he's involved, we know he's a chatty it. Kathy. Yes, we know that, and we know that he and and we do know that like there is this there is this power battle that has happened at Red Bull that's been happening for years, and it's been a powder keg waiting to fucking explode, and it's ha- and it happens to have exploded around this thing, and it seems like this woman is like just the kind of casualty of like. All these large, heavily invested in everything, anything but this woman's like truth or experience. That there are these powers at play. Well, if they were all, if they were all in lockstep, we would have never known that this even happened. Right. It would have all just been handled right. the way it's been handled, and right. we would have never known. Yes. Um, and she's been suspended. She's been suspended with pay, and we don't. And with pay, we don't. They haven't given an answer why. There and and there is there is room for like that there 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 might be grounds for that we don't know but th- that's why transparency within this thing is so fucking important I mean like Ford might walk they yeah. might and 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 Do really we know that? the they reality say put out that statement and then what have we heard but the reality that? is but the more that this builds and the more that it becomes like a, a, a thing the reality is the unfortunate reality is that until it affects people's bottom lines and people's pockets mm-hmm. like that's true d- nothing happens that's true and that's that is that's the unf- that is the brutal and harsh reality of like <laughs> living in a capitalist fucking system is that until until it's a thing where it's like the their the dollar amount and the bottom line is being affected then people won't you know do the right thing right they will you have to be forced financially and given financial pressures for places to do like the right thing and right. but that's also where the FIA yeah, that's, no, could the FIA. fucking step in the FIA. and 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 but that's where also you know MBS's relationship with Christian does seem and like he's a, meddling he's telling Max hey what are you doing it's, it's like, like you're not something what are you talking that about? is an absolute conflict of it's interest like, I'm sorry are you a, do you do P, do you do comms for Red Bull yeah like it doesn't make any sense why, why, um, you know. Yeah. So I think the FIA could go a long way into smoothing this over, or at least giving us some understanding behind the decision. Right. Um, but 
No, not nothing yet, and I don't think it's going to go away. Um, no, it doesn't look like this is. It doesn't look like this. Is, this doesn't look like this is resolving anytime soon. And who knows? It might go to. You know, I think the only way we're really going to know is if this goes to like a civil thing in 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 court, in a real court of law. Yeah. Yeah, um, to get any like to get any clarity, clarity. to get any clarity, is, but um, but I don't know why we're getting so negative, dude. Did you see Ollie Berman's dad? <laughs> okay, Ollie no Berman's way. dad was that was that was cute. cute. That it was, was cute. cute. It, it was cute, but we're coming in like Scrooge, being like, "No, <laughs> fuck Ollie Berman, <laughs> fuck his dad." Sported, something's rotten in the state of. Formula One. Yes. So, well, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. His name is fucking Kevin Magnuson. <laughs> we can talk <laughs> okay, about yeah, fucking what okay, a what a psycho. Let's talk about the race. Let's talk about the race. Okay. So this race, what is there even to say about it? You know what's you know what's also <laughs> Sergio Perez out here looking like he's gonna keep his job. <laughs> I mean, he's looking like he might be the number one driver. Look at <laughs> Looking like Sergio Perez, WDC 2025. Looking like, hey, you hey, you might not win the race by 20 seconds, but you'll still win the race if Max... <laughs> hey, if Max wasn't there, he still wins the race. He's maybe not winning by 25 seconds, but, but you know, he's pun, winning by pun, five seconds. Pundits, pundits are saying, you know, I was listening to this, some podcast. They're like, well, he's still got to he's still got to do better. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is enough. Him he getting, is safe. Him getting second place is enough. Him, he had a five second penalty and still got second place today. What did he get the five? Oh, and it wasn't even his fault. It was like an unsafe, it was an unsafe release. release. Was, yeah. It wasn't even his fault. Yeah. Now, Sergio Perez looking like he's going to keep his seat. I mean, da- right now, Daniel Ricciardo looks like he's not going to be taking that seat. <laughs> Rough week for Daniel. <laughs> Rough week for Daniel. Rough week for Daniel. Rough week for Daniel. Well, you know. On all sides. Well, listen, you know, you know, and I'm proud. I'm proud of my boy, Yuki Sonoda. Mm-hmm. Showed some real. It was it was kind of get out vibes, uh-huh. I, cause cause Kevin Magnuson yes. kept fucking yes terrorizing <laughs> yes. my baby angel. It was it was like he would like cut the cut the chicane, yeah. be really aggressive, yeah. do all kinds of terroristic illegal shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it would go. You, you'd see Yuki Sonoda radio, and I would brace myself. I go, what psych? No, what's that? And he goes, that was unsafe driving. <laughs> He left the track. Yeah. I'm like, what is going? Is get out vibes? Right. Get out vibes. Yeah. What have you done? Who, what have you done with my son? Whose brain is in Yuki Sonata <laughs> Noda's head? <laughs> and I said, maybe they fucking put him on some Zoloft. I or mean, some they shit. they gave him a talking to. <laughs> I mean, Laurent Menkes fucking sat him down and said, "You're not doing that shit anymore." Yeah. Playtime's over. At the same time, Yuki's like, but I'm kind of faster right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> By half a second. I quality, mean. In quality, half a second. I mean, it. Yuki Sonoda. I think he got a five-second penalty, though. Did he get a penalty, Gabby? Can we look that up? I don't think he got a penalty. They were handing out penalty. What were, so, it's very important that his uh, he finishes ahead of Daniel, though. For, well, he definitely finished ahead of Daniel. For, for, for it to be shockingly ludicrous when he doesn't get that rebel seat. <laughs> Because it's either yeah. it's either Daniel beats him right and gets the seat, or Yuki beats him and nothing happens. Yes, no, right, no, you know? or and then Perez keeps the seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, K Mac you know, got the he got two ten second he's, penalties. He fucking crashed in Albon. Oh, was that what the first one was? Yeah, and then he and then he, leave, no, he, over, he he over he overtook Yuki, Yuki Yuki off the track, <laughs> and then was just like, "This is my place now." <laughs> And I'll take the 10 second. And here's what I love about this yes. thing that this brilliant thing that Haas did. Yeah. It's like, well, you already got life in prison. Right. Why don't you just start killing more yeah. people? <laughs> Literally. That's what it was. That is what it was. And, and and I'm thinking to myself, this is a this shouldn't be allowed. That they can just yeah. and that this and that this track fucking sucks. Yeah. How bad is this track? That Kevin Magnuson can like lift in a high speed zone, mm-hmm. like lose a second, a lap, right, 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 right. and no one can pass him because yeah. these cars are too fucking big for the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, everybody's yeah. just getting fucking. We're in a traffic jam. Yeah, it's rush hour. Um, Yuki did for an unsafe release. So, okay, so uh, not, not his fault. fault. Not yeah. his fault. Not his fault. Nothing's ever Yuki's fault. You're only you're always you're a product of your environment and your genetics. Yes. So and you can't control either of those. So nothing Yuki's ever done is his fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, Yuki's out here two races in a row. 
having you know outperforming out, outperforming Daniel. Yeah, yeah, outperform I mean, Daniel let's you know let's 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 make sure that we're giving the kid his flowers, yes. dude. No, K Mac. Yuki's gonna get that seed was... in twenty twenty five and win the world driver championship. <laughs> he might get the he might get the seed in twenty twenty four if Max leaves halfway through the season. <laughs> <laughs> if Max, if if, if Yuki Sonoda wins a world drivers championship, I will just be a fucking puddle of cum. Dude. If Marco leaves and then Max leaves with him, I know they. Say Said that like today they were like they worked it out, they worked we it out, made up. They, you know they kissed, you know whatever. But like if if let's just go in the thought experiment of if Marco leaves, so epic for Marco's like I might not be here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Marco He's leaves, so for and real, then dude. Max is like I'm fucking out with him, and then Yuki Sonoda is like they're like at the end of the day, who's performing better in the car right now? <laughs> it's Yuki Sonoda. It has to be me. <laughs> and then Liam Lawson's just like take, just like <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? As Yuki Sonoda collects his World Drivers Championship, WDC, dude, and he's like, oh, "It's not, it's not a restaurant, but I'll take it." Um. Okay. Wait. You know so, who else sucks? Wait. No. I, I want to say one thing. I was, I was, I was so mad at K Mag watching the race. Mm-hmm. I was furious. But then after the race, I was like, "Fuck K Mag!" <laughs> like, I like, I had to tip my hat. Your Haas F1 team. Hat. My well, I'm rocking, I'm rocking my Haas F1 team hat because. What an I mean, because he literally ruined everyone's <laughs> race today. I mean, it's like he was like say goodnight to the bad guy. I mean, he was like, I, I will be. He, he was he the was the villain. That, he was the he was the um. You know that meme where there's the skeleton under the water. Uh-huh. And then, and yes, then there's yeah, a child yeah. getting played with. <laughs> yeah. Hulkenberg was a child getting played with, and came back was the skeleton under the water. Yes. Actually, they were all skeletons under the water. Yeah, right, right, right. right. He Everyone, was, everyone's races that got uh, fucked. Yeah, by he him. fucked everyone. It, it was iconic to see at the at, when he crossed the finish line because he was in like 11th, and then he just drops down to like 18th. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know what's still what's crazy though is you know that was so. Li- there's nothing more dangerous than Kevin when when a team tells Kevin Magnuson being like, "Do whatever you can," like your race is already ruined. Right, 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 right. right. You're on death row. Yes. Do whatever the fuck you want. Right. He is, you know, whenever Yuki tried to pass him, I'm like, that is the most terrifying. Those are the two most terrifying two cars on the track. Yeah. <laughs> nothing scarier than watching Kevin Magnuson try uh, uh, Yuki Sonoda trying to send it on Kevin Magnuson. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. two most aggressive, <laughs> chaotic, al- chaotic. I mean, ADD. Just. <laughs> I mean, Ollie Behrman tried to send it on K Mag, like like lap one on yep. the outside. I'm like, what are you doing? Right. What are you stupid? Yeah. That was race over right there. Grand yeah. opening, grand closing. Yeah. Right fucking there. Right. You don't send it on the outside on K Mag. Yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. K Mag doesn't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's like, no one's expecting anything of us this year. <laughs> no, he's, he cares about his rep. Right, he's all about his. Rep. He's like he's, he's like Marlo. Boys. He's like Marlo in the Wire, which you don't know because mm-hmm. you've never seen it, even though you worked on a David Simon show. Well, it kept me loose. <laughs> if I had seen it, I would have been tight on set. <laughs> he's like Marlo. He's like, this is what they're saying about me on the streets. Right. He cares about his rep on the streets. Yeah. K Mag cares about his rep on the streets. Oh, Vankas, this episode is brought to you by June Shine, baby. You might have seen June Shine around. They might be your go-to adult beverage. You know what they're famous for? They're famous for the hard kombuchas, right? But guess what? They're doing cocktails too now, baby, and June Shine makes the best canned cocktail on the planet. Most specifically, this week we're talking about the June Shine Tequila Margarita. They're next level and they start at 10% alcohol, baby, okay? That's one and a half to two shots, but you get it in a can! Gotta love it! They're made with real spirits and real fruit and taste incredible and have no added sugars. They're insanely delicious. They're light and refreshing. The buzz is legit with that 10%, and they're ridiculously convenient. No mess, no stress, no BS. It's in a can. You gotta love when it's easy and it's just in a can. You pop it, it gets the little k- It gets the little k- k- And then you drink it. We're doing it with that June Shine Tequila Margarita, okay? Honestly, I've been drinking Junchan for a while. I love the I, I'm I'm I love a little kombucha moment. I love kombucha. It helps with my gut. And so whenever I, I drink, I have the experience of when I'm, I'm drinking a Junchan, I think like, oh, I'm being a little bit healthy, and that's just like a, that's good for me in my soul. So th- that could be fucking you too. They're a total crowd pleaser. Everyone loves drinking them. They're great for the summer. Summer's coming up, baby. We're getting that summer body. We're getting it going. Spring is uh, is coming. The sun's coming out. It's starting to get a little warmer. Time to get your June shine, okay? June shine can be found 
In over 10,000 stores across the country, it's available in retailers you are already visiting from groceries and alcohol like Whole Foods, Target, Ralph's, Vons, Albertsons, Trader Joe's, Kroger, Wegmans, Total Wine, BevMo, Safeway, and more, baby! They're everywhere! And they're also on the Red Flags podcast. Head to juneshine.com to find where their margaritas are near you, baby. Okay, now back to the show. Yeah, you know who maybe doesn't care about his rep? Lance Stroll. <laughs> Lance fucking Stroll, dude. <laughs> I mean... Lan- that was just that was iconic. That I was, was like, thank God, <laughs> thank God for this. <laughs> I mean, without Latifi, mm-hmm. Logan Sargent seems like he's tightened it up a bit. Yep. Lance Stroll's all we got left for us <laughs> to throw a little bit of a wild card just, into this bad boy. Just throw a little bit of chaos into the fucking fold. I mean, it, it would have been would have been better if it happened later in the race. Mm-hmm. But um, Lance, can you just stay focused for three quarters of the race next time? Who hit that? Someone else has hit that part. There, that, that's been a, a, a another part that someone's hit. It's like a kind of commonplace that people have like hit their shit. But I mean, yeah, yeah he, he he's turning in. He 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 clips the. He clips his front left on the thing. He he and slams into the <laughs> he slams into the barriers, and then his engineer is like, "You okay? You no, first no, he says, you okay?" You, he goes, "Are you all right?" Yes. Yes. And then he, he, he goes, says, "I hit the wall." No. And then he, then he goes, "Can you bring it in?" <laughs> Keep bringing it home. And then he goes, "I'm in the fucking wall, <laughs> man." <laughs> So great. That was fucking iconic. Oh, and then man. they shot they had that great shot like through the crack of him just like through the barrier of yeah. just his face just being like, yeah, I could, <laughs> fuck my dude, life. Dude, Mick Schumacher's <laughs> life is looking awesome right now. Dude. Have Mick- you seen Mick Schumacher's Instagram? Yes, dude. Just him with his model girlfriend, just with his shirt open, just living the fucking best life. Just in his slutty little outfits, <laughs> just in his fucking, I mean, Mick Sits Schum- on Toto's lap once a week. Dude, talk about the glow up. Talk, <laughs> about, talk about what getting a girlfriend can do for your style. <laughs> if you're a guy like that who just like has all the access to all the clothing in the world, all the nicest shit in the world, you just don't know how to be, and then you just get like, you get a girlfriend who has style, then yeah. all of a sudden you just look fucking awesome yeah <laughs> i mean he looks like he's just loving fucking life he's doing his the little bit of day and they slap each other's hands yeah. all, each other's over hands. All, all over the world all over the world all over the world yeah fucking in wherever the fuck they want to be that's in, where they are in versailles in fucking in venice you or know wherever the fuck. In, in, in lake como <laughs> in milan in, in, on their ranch on the, their in, cows and yes. their horses that is that life is just so available and ready to to maybe guys he like was that. thinking about that yeah. when he crashed. <laughs> I mean, he's friends with Mick. He's, yeah, he he's was like, friends. Fuck, fuck, dude. I should just get a fucking girlfriend with style and just fucking be just live my awesome life. That's <laughs> right there waiting for me. <laughs> Instead, I'm I'm clipping barriers and, and fucking put, engineers are asking me stupid fucking yeah, questions. And they're like, can you bring it in? Dude, look at the fucking television <laughs> screen. My fucking car is wedged into the fucking tech pro. What are you talking about? <laughs> you just sit on the side of the road. Ah, it's hot as fuck. God damn Your it. neck hurts. You know what I love about Formula One and why yeah. it's a perfect sport? All the other things we said, not notwithstanding. <laughs> mm-hmm. That we get to just see rich people so miserable. Yeah. Just so, <laughs> he's so fucking miserable. Yeah, that's it's true. It's like, and we buy it. Mm-hmm. I believe that he's miserable. Mm, and yeah. I empathize with him. I'm like, yeah, that fucking sucks. That dude. sucks. Your dad bought you, your dad gave you everything you wanted. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. <laughs> yeah. It fucking sucks. And everybody looks at you different. Yeah. And um, meanwhile, later, Alonso touched the wall. And, and he, he's just, I just gave it the little key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> like when Alonso touches the wall, he's like, oh, sorry, gave it a little kiss. And then, like, <laughs> Lance, no, what's, Lance what's, overhears that in the garage. He's like, "Fuck you, yeah, dude." <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, he, yeah, he just know he knows he knows how to finesse it. Yeah, he knows how to he knows he knows all the layers. Yeah, how to how to how to caress that ba- that wall. That wall, dude. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> I of, just gave it a little kiss. I just gave it a little kiss. <laughs> You think he said that on purpose? Yes, of course. To fuck with Lance. Oh. Like, like <laughs> that's how you touch a wall. Yeah, right. I just want to see. I just wanted to check in. Yeah, check in yeah. with my surroundings. <laughs> yeah. Just make it a little interesting yeah. for me. No, Lance is such a ledge. I was just listening to this interview of him with him, and he talked about how no one else in his family is competitive. 
Well, because all of the competitive juice went into <laughs> one fucking cell. <laughs> one fucking embryo. But you would think it's like, he was like, yeah, my dad's like not really competitive. His dad was like built like worked in an explosive yes. factory he worked he worked in an explosive factory because they were it was you know mining country yeah. so they would need to blow out the mines and his dad worked in the factory that like developed these explosives now 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 alonzo just blows out backs and tracks and <laughs> and, and, and bl- gets the most out of the fucking car yeah dude. and for those of you who don't know his dad was like a inventor like a tinkerer and he mm-hmm. built because they didn't have money he just built the fr- His the f- sister, yes. a card, who was yes. five, mm-hmm. which is the appropriate young age to start carding. And yes. the sister was like, um, cringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alonzo, who was two. She, her, her dad was like, her, 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 his uh, sister was like, dad, literally stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cringe right now. Then Alonzo was like, give it to me. <laughs> and he was two. As a three-year-old. Two yeah, or yeah, three, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they couldn't even walk. Yeah, they put like blocks on those, <laughs> Yeah, those, the, Yeah, they the had to like pedal. modify it to put his tiny little Alonzo, which was, uh, it's tiny now. I can't even imagine how tiny it was when it was two. Right. Um, no, he's the greatest. Was he born without the pectoral muscle? He's never had he's a pectoral muscle. He's never had one, muscle. dude. And a three-year-old, no pectoral muscle. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> Ripping it around a fucking <laughs> karting track, dude. Yeah. Other rumors is that he, that, <laughs> that he might go to Red Bull if and Max that, were to and leave. And that one side wants him and one side doesn't. That the Mar- that Marco's like fuck that. Oh, <laughs> well, because Marco, Marco, because <laughs> he's tacky and I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got no taste. Um. Yeah. What? Okay. So what else happened in this race? So yeah, Lance crashed. K Mag was a terrorist. K Mag ruined but, everyone's lives. And Yuki and Yuki kept his cool. Yuki kept his cool. Ali Berman, obviously. Oh, how how annoying is Ali Berman now that he's going to go back to F two, having done F <laughs> one? Well, what's funny is that Ali Berman is currently last in F two. Right, it's going to kill his chance at a championship. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be. He's, he's, well, he was on pole. Yeah, he was. He fit. He he got pole in in Saudi. Yeah. Um, Antonelli, his teammate, I think, got sixth. In it's, the feature it's, race, it's um, it's quite a matchup. Yeah, those I mean, two guys in equal equipment. He's a hot property now. Ollie Roman is definitely like, especially a, if he thumps Antonelli. Definitely. Um, and no, I mean, let's let's talk a bit about that. Let's talk a bit about his race. I know we want to poo-poo it, but let's you know, he comes in off of he didn't he, fuck up. I think he right on that a track his, on a this, this is a fucking hard track. Yes. This is like, and it's and it's the is it harder it, than Qatar? Or Zanvoort and changing conditions. <laughs> Liam people, Lawson, well, baby. people are yeah. I, uh, two people can be, two truths can exist at the same time. But everyone's like, oh, Ollie Berman needs a seat. He needs it. He but that's what they it, were saying it. about Liam Lawson last year. And that's they what can't people, all get it. They can't all have. Yeah, a but seat. there are lots of seats that might be opening up. Joe's. There are so many of potentially available seats. Yeah, but every it's not year, just every one. year there are good kids. Yeah, but there is this crop is especially good. Who was like Drugovich? When Drugovich won of two, people were yeah, like, Yeah, but everyone was but sucking poor Cher's dick. Not they were, re- they kind were blowing, of. Not really. If, dude, dude, if poor Cher got got lucky enough to get in there and didn't fuck up, people would be talking about poor Cher the same way. Well, yeah, because Because poor Cher was a hot prospect, just like Ollie Berriman. Yeah. All right, guys, trfpod, email me at gmail.com. Email me if I'm wrong. But the vibe around Porsche was was like, this kid is kind something. Kind of, not really. Not he in was in his way. second year of F2. Yeah, and he won, and, and, and he's Fred Vasseur loves him. Fred yeah. Vasseur is like, he's Fred Vasseur. Well, Fred Fred was actually asked about Ollie. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Fred was asked about Ollie, and he was. they were like, so like... You know, how does it feel with Ollie, you know, you know, coming up through the, the, the driver program? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't this is this special for you? And he was like, well, um, Ollie was actually um, in there before I was hired. <laughs> and he was basically just like, it's not my decision, actually, to hire. I would have. The subject was like, I don't fucking know this kid. He's <laughs> like, this isn't actually my guy. Like, yeah. I, if, if it was up to me, Teo Porcher would be in that fucking seat. Right. It was actually, it was, an, it was an interesting moment of honesty from him around that. But Yeah, we interviewed him uh, no, a couple years ago, and he said, yeah. you know, Teo Porcher was yeah. his guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, all, well, he's 18. He's young. 
He, I think he finished like sixth in F2 last year. This yeah. is his second year in F2. He had a good first year in F2. Guess who finished fifth in F2 in his first year? Who? Logan fucking Sargent. <laughs> okay, he just... Yeah, but would, if, if, do you think if Logan Sargent was put in the Ferrari at this, do, do you think he's performing like this? I know that Nick DeVries was put in Alpha Tower and did pretty goddamn good. Yeah, maybe there's something about the like adrenaline it, of the, the adrenaline first adrenaline of the first thing. I agree. I I don't want to. And the not, expectations are so let's low. Not, listen here. Let's not fucking get ahead of ourselves. But to 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 completely be like it's bullshit. It's nothing. That's not you know. I don't think it's bullshit. It's nothing. I didn't say that. Yeah. I said that this was a apocalyptic week in F1. Right. And how quickly. People are just like trying to make this feel good story just kind of blot out. I just need I, I guess just, I just feel like yeah. I need to bah yeah. humbug a little bit yeah. Yeah. just to remember that this sport is still a catastrophe <laughs> and that this yeah. guy getting seventh in the second fastest car <laughs> is not going to overcome that. Yeah. Right. Sure. Michael Schumacher, when he his debut, he got like a he qualified seventh. In, like, the worst fucking car. Uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, let's... And for his own good... Yeah. Let's just say he did he did solid... He did a solid no, job. Cute. He didn't it was fucking cute, blow it. It was a cute story. And Liam Lawson did a better job. Sure, yeah. And it's more of an outrage that Liam Lawson's, like, picking his ass right now. <laughs> yeah. Where Ollie Berman is still in F2. Well, but it's not an outrage because uh, then Yuki Tsunoda would, wouldn't be in F1 right now. So, you know, yeah. That's th- those are the those are or your choices Daniel or Daniel Ricardo. Right now it's looking like you know yeah one of those seats. Um, no, it was fucking it was cute, dude. It was a cute day. He's a cute kid. His dad was cute. His dad was cute. His dad was cute. His dad was like, you know. His dad was his dad was freak- every dad. His, his dad was every well, dad. Not that- every dad. His dad was freaking the fuck out in a very cute way. But he was he was anxious. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying if I if I put you in a I don't actually want to even think about your dad's facial expressions <laughs> if you were in a Formula One car. Yeah. But I know my dad would be stressed out if he saw me in a Formula no, One car. Of course, car. there's just like a no, but yeah. like you see other people's dads like Carlos Sainz's dad. Yeah. they're just like chill. Yeah, they're chill. Right. They they've act like they they act like they've been there before because they have. This guy literally hasn't been there before. Right. No. He's like all of a sudden he's like, what the fuck is going on? The yeah. the, the John Elkans fucking b- billionaire John Elkans <laughs> like putting his hands on his shoulders like this is going great, buddy. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, I mean, right like now? the Illuminati right now. No, the story of it is fucking cute, dude. Yeah, and it's like maybe next year you'll get a Haas seat, and right. all of a sudden he's driving for Ferrari. It's insane. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the fucking story. And and. I think there is something of note of like that, you know, in this high pressure moment that he did step up to the plate. It's it's also it, it does go to show a bit of the interesting. He did get seventh in the second fastest car. But mm-hmm. like these, it, I think it probably goes to show how actually capable of being an F1 many drivers are. There's mm. probably a ton, there's probably a ton of kids in F2 who had been given if given that opportunity would have performed as well if not better. Right. It's if the, if this one kid did it, you think that the you think that the the the, the Portuguese kid who fucking won the first sprint race and feature like wouldn't have been able to like step up to the plate and maybe do better than 7th? Yeah. Well, this world is interesting. This this F1 cuz it's all about I've been thinking about this and like as I'm thinking about like why F1 specifically. There's a level of like it's all about just like recreating perfection. In like rally when there's I feel like it there's you know we talk about it's it's the 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 car versus the driver and it's like the recreating the robotic nature of it. I think Alonso in an interview said like what do you try to accomplish every time you enter the car and he was like to be a robot. To do to to do it to be the, well, it's like golf. It's like you, to, to have a like a perfect replicable swing yes, every time. That's right. the key to golf. Yes. that's the key to like being a great three point shooter. Mm-hmm. It's just having a consistent form. Yes, and it's about like and, and it's and it's kind of what's interesting about F one is it's that it's the pursuit of like that perfection, 
there's it's the pursuit of the like the, the perfect, perfect lap, lap which the, is from uh, Ford yeah, versus Ferrari. Yeah, the perfect you know it, like rallies like messy and dirty and it's about like making the best of the mess. It's not yeah. about being perfect. It's yeah. just about like getting through it and being quick on your feet and all this stuff. Whereas F1 is just about like mastering and being perfect. And I think like when you think about all these kids who are like training for that thing specifically, they all have that uh, versions of that same muscle. I think that's what these, that's what these moments go to show. Now it, what's, what makes it more interesting is that when they get into the sport and there's the added pressure and you have the contract and you have all the interviews going up to it, and you have all the stuff, the added stuff, can you keep that? Can you not let that distract you? But I think can, there's something. Can, is the human going to tear down the robot? Exactly. Yeah. But in, in, I think it's interesting that in moments like this, when when there's all that adrenaline, it's like t- now's the time to cool. step. Now's the time to step up to the plate. A lot of these guys can kind of like get in that mode and 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 get it done on one for one weekend. But even after the race, he was like. He was already talking like he had been there before. He was like, yeah, it wasn't the best day today. Like, could have done this better. Could have done this better. Yeah. They were like, this was awesome, dude. We weren't expecting fucking, like, kind of anything here. Yeah. I mean, but the best example of the guy that you, you really believe is just, like, so unflappable is Oscar Piastri. Yes. Uh, he was iconic today. Yeah, what, 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 was, what was his? Well, because they were... <laughs> Because he ne- and he, this has happened before. He never complains about other drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the other yeah. the team called him. They go, "Whoa, wasn't Hamilton moving under braking?" Yeah. <laughs> and like he just, they're like, they're they're like, ha- they were yeah. like Helmet Marco. Right, right, right. Ask us about ask us about Lewis Hamilton yeah, moving yeah. under braking. Yeah, ask yeah, us about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Oscar Piastri just doesn't give a fuck. And, and because he's just he's kind of robotic, he doesn't right. He's unflappable. Yeah, that's an interesting quality of 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 these drivers. That's what makes a Yuki and a K Mag interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's what makes them interesting is because they're so fucking chaotic and it's emotional like, and emotional. That's why when you think about like that's why th- there is a challenge and like, Leclerc and Leclerc. Leclerc is that way too. Totally. But it's that, but that's, but that I think it's the human, but there's the, um, you know what's interesting? It's like p- poker, right? Mm-hmm. There's the sort of, okay, what's the best, best math play? Mm-hmm. That's the robot part. Yep, of it. yep, yep. But yep. there's the human part of it, like, okay, when should I bluff? What do I think this is? The, mm-hmm. Do I think this? It's like the reading of the person. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, I've been behaving this way this, this amount of times, or I've been, or this guy's been behaving in this manner. And it's this. It's um, maybe I should deviate from that. Right. It's like I've been playing conservatively, conservatively, conservatively. Now it's time to be aggressive because mm-hmm. it's going to change. There's um, there was a woman. I forgot her name. She wrote a whole book about how like she's a psychologist. I think. And yeah. She just she learned poker and she like kind of got really good at poker. And yeah. It's all about you learn the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the robot side of things. Yes. But there's also the human side, and I think. That's something that I think Verstappen has mastered in terms of like mm-hmm. he's got the robot, but yeah. he's also got like nobody wants to fuck with this guy because right. they know he's a yeah. psycho and will crash into yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the Senna of it, right? Yes. So you do. I think there is a a human element to it. Definitely. Where it's like the intimidation factor. Yes. Where it's yes, like I'm yes, getting yes, in this yes. guy's head, and I know that this guy is actually kind of it's um the the madman thing that di- that um. A lot of dictators, right? A lot of uh, mm-hmm. people that run governments, they actually try to, they're actually, they try to um, exude more craziness than they actually are, mm. right? It's like they want people to think that they're fucking crazy. Right, right. Because right. it's like, oh, I don't want to, inv- I don't want to do a regime change. That guy's a lunatic and he has nuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So there's that human element. And I think there's that element. I think K Mike has it. And I think Max has it. It's like, Oh God, Max is Max is about that action. I don't want to send it on Max. Right. I think Leclerc's about that action. Yeah, I don't think it's as calculated though with Leclerc. I think Leclerc is like more genuinely just emotional. kind of like emotional. Whereas like Max, I think is like is a Max is emotional, but it's like it is more calculated. It is about like that rep thing. I don't right. think like Leclerc has like yeah, it's his, like that's the rep with Leclerc. He's like he's a this. He's affable in other aspects of his life, and then like emotional on track. Mm. But th- I just think there is that, like I said in poker, there is that human element. Totally. 
And and K Mag maybe like or K Mag and Yuki have the like maybe the human element without the robotic. Element, yeah, you know what I mean. It's just yeah. the you human. gotta have both. Like Michael Schumacher was both. Right. right. He had the the robotic like I can just nail these lap lap yep, after yep. lap, but he had the like I like I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm somebody that these guys need to worry about. What is George Russell then? Because George Russell to me is like he's definitely robot. He's also, but he does also have like a bit of like you know we know what it is to pass this guy. Like he's got a yes. little bit of both. I mean, when he when Russell at the start of the race, and that's not about robot. That's just about creating an aura around yourself. <laughs> yeah, but he also walking does walking into the bar with your chest out yeah. and a and a yeah. crazy look in your eye. Yeah, <laughs> but he also like he does feel like he is a robot. I mean, he feels like he's a Terminator. You know. He's a, we've talked about this. He's a class all into himself because yeah. <laughs> he, he, he wants to present as this polished guy, but there is this unruffledness about the way he behaves on track. Well, well today at the start of the race, when Lando, when Lando like, did he's like the, jump start. Yeah. <laughs> jump start at the line. And as within like a, a yeah. second of him starting, he's already on comms yeah. being like Lando with the jump start. <laughs> <laughs> as he's pulling into turn one, it's like, mm, tattletale. I think that that British, Stiff upper lip, very polished mm -hmm. veneer is so paper thin with him. Yeah. And like we've seen when he gets close to Hamilton, it starts to poke out. Like, am I racing him? Are we racing each other? Or are we racing as a team? Like, right, right, right. You know, and he and he gets really aggressive with Lewis. Um, and uh, he's, he's been, been outperforming. He's been outperforming <laughs> First Lewis. two races, George Russell outperforming never, Lewis Hamilton. Never doubted him for a minute. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is. What's going on? I mean, Lewis is just not qualifying well. I don't well. think that Lewis... Do I think that Lewis doesn't give a fuck about this season. I hope that. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Or that the car... Or that I think George is better... At, yeah. I mean, we sell this in 2022. When the yeah. car sucked, George did better. Yes. And when they got, when they hooked the car up, Lewis yeah. did better. So you think... Lewis is trying to make this interesting. I'd like to think. Well, I think Lewis, Lewis is not as locked in as George, right? Because Lewis is like, oh, from this day car. Yeah. No, no, because this he's like, oh, this car sucks. I can't <laughs> even win with this car. I can't yeah. even get on the podium. Right. Like, yes, it, it doesn't even getting fifth place and George getting seventh. Yeah. means nothing to him. <laughs> right. Whereas George getting fifth and Lewis getting seventh. It's like a, a money shot for him. <laughs> yeah, it means everything Everything's to George. In. I mean, George grew up idolized. Like, what was that? Yeah, the the great picture the of great like picture of George him. is standing there with a with a Lewis's book, beating the, beating Lewis. It, it feels like a win every time. Every he beats time beats Lewis, Lewis, he gets home and he said he looks in the mirror and says, "You sir beat Lewis Hamilton today." <laughs> and looks in the mirror. No, and he looks in the mirror and he takes his dick out like Dirk Diggler. He's like, "You're a bright shining star." <laughs> Um. Uh, no, I. I think. I think also, that, can you explain this to me? This this Lando jump start. I'm like, yeah, he, they're like, they're like, no, but didn't alert the sensor. I'm like, it alerted the sensor in my eyes. Yeah, it didn't pass the eye test, dude. No, the sensors in my eyes that that tr also track movements. I guess what like, they. I guess I guess what they said was that he didn't move enough like because his wheel did his like, wheel went over the line that, what they're saying that it didn't. Chalk flew up <laughs> no the sensor said he didn't i don't know how that wasn't called that was crazy that, that if, wasn't called. If, if you were in a track meet and a guy did or, you know I've, like like in a football game yeah or if, yeah that was yeah. a false start yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. guy moves you're like oh that guy moved yeah yeah, yeah. Here's, here's what i don't understand yeah here's what i don't understand for something like um an overtake yeah. or like a Kevin Magnuson thing. Mm -hmm. They use their judgment. They're like, we're going to look at this. We're going to interpret this. Right. It's a, it's an eyeball test. Yes. But for a false start. Right. That's so, he fucking moved. No, it's like, dude. it's like, it's like when, you know, you see like a, a buzzer beater in basketball yeah. and it's like, if the ball's in his hand and the fucking red light is going, then guess what? It's no, it's no good. It's if no the ball's good. out of his hand and the red light's still, you know, is is it on the clock still going? Then that's a good shot. I, the I red light get, is on. I I just don't get how you could see that with your <laughs> eyes and then be like, well, what does the sensor say? Yeah. We've lost the plot. <laughs> We've lost the plot. Yeah, bring the umps back, dude. It's like right? you know, this can't all be sensors. No, that was crazy. If if we were if 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 we were in the 1950s and they watched that back. 
and there was no sentence. They'd be like, no, fucking penalty. Um, totally. I don't really care. I don't think he got an advantage from it. No, it if probably anything, he fucked a, him up. <laughs> it was a it disadvantage because he knew he fucked up, so he stopped the car and was yeah. like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he had a false start. <laughs> he was like, nobody saw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> No one saw that. George, <laughs> meanwhile, George Russell's like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Passing it, being like, naughty, naughty, naughty. Yeah. Yeah. He's like ordering groceries. Oh. Yeah. He's in the, tur- he's, do- he's doing turn one and snitching at yeah. the same time. <laughs> Pressing the fucking intercom button. Um, um, what else fucking happened in this race? Yeah, K Mag squeezed out. Your boy Albon. Norris had the lead for a while. Yeah. Well, so it was like, so the safety car hit, and then Norris you Hamilton. You Lance Stroll hit. Lance Stroll hit, so the safety car came out. Then yeah. Norris, Hamilton, Hulkenberg, and Joe stayed out on their mediums. Everyone else came into the pits. Yeah. So Lewis and Norris, you know, were up at the top. And then it was like, yeah, Norris was leading. He was trying to hold, you know, hold off max that didn't last very long and then it was just like kind of i watched the race late mm-hmm. and i was like kind of like all right does anything happen then like i Did saw you the, fast forward no i no, but bit. i saw the results and was kind of like i saw the results early and was just like oh well they're just gonna pit and then just drop down in the order and like nothing else fucking crazy happens mm-hmm. for a second when when ricardo spun out i was like oh baby and no just spun out yeah if you're gonna the, spin out at least fucking put a yeah you know, red flag it, baby. Yeah. Like, really go. Yeah, yeah. Give us, give us, let's give us something to talk about. You know what must have been really fucking crazy? What? Can you imagine being Max Verstappen? Uh-huh. Because it because Max Verstappen was, like, lapping the field. Yeah. And then he, it was from Max Verstappen's camera. Right. That we see Daniel Ricciardo spin. Like, that's uh-huh. where you get the best shot of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, because, no, there yeah. was no, like, television cameras right, on right, Daniel right. Ricciardo. He yeah. was irrelevant in the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our best view of it. Is actually from Max Verstappen, like approaching him to lap him. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you see him spin out. It's like, can you imagine what's going through Max Verstappen's mind? It's like this guy was like my teammate. <laughs> like he was giving me. He's like, yeah. It's it's so depressing. Yeah. It's so depressing. Daniel. Like, it's like you know. It's like it's like um watching um. It's like seeing the senior on your rugby team <laughs> when you were a freshman and like you see his Instagram and he's like fat and bald. But like when you were in college. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was like a he was stud. That dude. Yeah, he yeah. was he was yeah, like your the tenure, hottest guy yeah, your, ever. Yeah, it's your ten year high school reunion, and, and you're, you're like, oh, oh fuck, God. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, to what you, happened dude? to you? Some of the most handsome people that I went to college with are like not handsome anymore. Yeah, that's what Max. You know, that's probably exactly what Max thought. He's like, oh, dude, oh, okay, Jesus, already spinning right, in the fuck. back. Okay, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> because I know he, they like each other. They, yeah, no, they're they're boys. Um, Who else? Oh, fucking Pierre, lap one. They're like, gearbox issues come in. <laughs> I mean, Alpine. You think he was kind of relieved, though? Of course. Who it's wants like, who to, wants fuck, to, who who wants wants to, to drive that car? Yeah. I mean, he's like, Ocon fucking did pretty good, and he made it to 15. Yeah, o- Ocon literally like pulled off a fucking miracle race to get to 14th today. That was brilliant when he um, when Yuki and K-Mag were fucking battling, and yeah. he just snuck in there. I was like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. He's a fucking, That's such an Ocon move. He's such a slippery little guy. Yeah. Um, should we go into our awards? Let's get into our awards, baby. I do want to say one thing about Total Wolf. Yes. Fuck Toto Wolf. <laughs> what 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 this week? When he was making a joke about hiring Marco, he's like, we uh, could use a little mascot like like Lauda. He was like, we could use another mascot now that Lauda's gone. Now I'm paraphrasing. He said something to him. He that was effect? like he was like, we could use a mascot. He doesn't wear a red hat like Nikki did. I'm like, Nikki Lauda oh. was more than a fucking mascot. He built he he brought glory back to Ferrari as a driver. Then he brought, when Luca Montemizemolo took over Ferrari, you know what his first hire was? Nicky Lauda. Nicky Lauda as a fucking consultant. Okay? Yeah. You know, who, you know who convinced Lewis Hamilton to come to uh, Mercedes? Wasn't Toto fucking Wolf. Wasn't the finance guy who, who, who brought his way into Williams, 
bought his way into Mercedes. That's not the guy who landed the Hamilton plane. Yeah, no. It was the real Phoenix who came out of the fucking flames. Yeah, yeah. And, and fucking almost won a championship. Yeah. And then and then won a championship later. Yeah, looking like a little gremlin. And then another, and you know why? Because another little gremlin stole Lewis Hamilton again from Toto Wolf. And he's like, these little gremlins just have an ability. Like, I just thought it was so disrespectful that's to crazy. call Nicky Lauda a, a, a mascot when he his track record for success is so crazy and his and and, and he's just Hamilton's poking about it you know how instrumental Lauda was in his decision to even come there yeah so you don't get Toto Wolf without Nicky Lauda because you don't get Lewis Hamilton without Nicky Lauda hundred percent so, no Toto doesn't Toto is kind of like nah it's not a value you know he doesn't he he, he wants it to be his. Well, that would be fucking now that, crazy. Now that Lewis if is gone. Max Verstappen and Helmut Marko went to Mercedes. <laughs> fucking insane. Um, hottest moment of the day. The, um, the Carlos Sainz Hospital picks. Mm. Like, Jesus, dude. You got so much working against you, and you look so... And then, did you see him walking in the past? Yeah, everyone not... Says, everyone said he looked great. They're like, looking great. I'm like, he looks like shit. Yeah, he can barely he walk. walk. But I mean, he looked good. I mean, of course, health wise, he looked like shit. No, he looked like he was in um, immense amount of pain. Yeah, and but he him had, he was had so many people around him. Like, but him just no one could touch him. Yeah, but him just showing up day after fucking getting his appendix taken out, For showing the team up team that fired him. Yeah, <laughs> I would have flown straight home. Truly, I gotta, I gotta take my hat off to him. Yeah, I would have been like, wait, they're firing me, and I just got my appendix removed. I want to like show support to Ollie Berman with yeah. Carlos Sainz. <laughs> with us, uh, Daddy Signs. Yeah. Daddy Signs congratulating Ollie Berman. Yeah. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. I would have been out of there. I would have been straight back to fucking Monaco. And then you would not be in a seat next year. See that? This is this is this is how Carlos Signs always lands on his fucking feet. Oh, you're right. Dude. That is the mm, difference. Fuck. Is that is that you know guy like, like look, you, look, a guy look. like you would be like fuck that I'm not <laughs> going and then people would be like should we hire him No maybe not. And no then, I would like, I'd be in the Red Bull garage. <laughs> Carlos signs or, or, or the or the Mercedes garage. Carlos signs wins wins these brown. It's all these little things, these little brownie points that you get if you're the if you're fucking Carlos signs. You, know like, you know what it is? Gotta you know get that guy on my I gotta team. Say, he he goes way up on the pussy eating rankings for me now. <laughs> the world pussy eating rank. Oh yeah, he does all the extra shit. He does all the extra work. He doesn't just rely on his looks. Yeah, he he fucking checks all the goddamn boxes. He kisses the neck. He teases. No, yeah, he, 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 he takes his time. He takes baby. his time with it, dude. Yeah, dude. No, he's he he's a guy who crosses his T's and dots your body. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh. Yeah. I'll give I'll give it to that. I'll give. I'll, I'll, I'm with you on that. Let's. People say I don't compliment Carlos Sainz. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to that after I after I give you incredible logic. <laughs> um. Daddy of the day. It's got to be Ollie Berman's dad. Yeah. People are saying it's Ollie Berman. It's <laughs> Ollie Berman's father, dude. It's Ollie Berman's dad, dude. I don't know. I feel like Ollie Berman kind of dadded his dad. His dad was more nervous than Ollie. You Ollie I mean? Berman's dad is Jewish dad of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or and Jewish mom. Jewish, of the dad. Yeah, yeah. And and Ollie kind of sunned his dad. He was like, "Bro, like I'm chill. I got this." And his dad's like, "Oh my god." Um, I'll give it to Ollie. You can give it to his dad. <laughs> the The Bermans, the Berman the, crew, oh. are daddy of the day. Um, radio of the day. It's got to be Lance's radio, right? <laughs> nah, I'm in the fucking wall, dude. <laughs> yeah, someone wrote Lance. Nah, I'm in the fucking wall stroll. <laughs> um, oh god. Someone wrote, I think we had a good. I think we had good pace today. Says Max <laughs> after winning by half an hour. <laughs> Really good pace. There were some great. Um, there were some great uh, always, radios. Uh, yeah. Alex Albon said someone was being naughty. I don't know who he was talking about. I think it was about. Yuki or something. Also, um, naughty. When they told uh, when when they left Norris out on the mediums and they were like, "Keep protect your tires." He's he like, was like, like, I got Max Verstappen behind me." <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Yeah. How am I gonna protect it's my tires? It's a restart. It's a restart. I'm trying to like hold on to positions here. Yeah. You left me he out like on. He like laughed. He was like. <laughs> 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 he said as if dude yeah um karen of the day karen of the day a lot of people have a 
George George snitching on Lando fucking three seconds into the race. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. I was like, damn, he's not even going to get through lap one. Yeah, George <laughs> George Narc Russell. George, LOL, says someone. George snitching on Lando's jump start. George, George he jumped the start, Russell. <laughs> um, uh, I loved how smooth he was. While it wasn't even exciting. He's like, jump the start. Yeah, jump the start. Mm-hmm. Count on that right there. Ticket for you, sir. Yeah, that was probably red flag of the day. Red flag of the day. Mm. I mean, the FIA, the lack of transparency from Red Bull, the, the all the drivers' responses to the situation, <laughs> except for like Lewis. You know, this whole situation, red flag of the day, red flag of the week, red flag of the season. Mm. This thing needs to be handled properly. It, it's there's it, it's it a real be. fucking. It won't be. It won't be until un- it won't be until there's real financial consequences and people's and and people's fucking bottom line start being affected. Yeah, and until that happens, yeah, I think you're right. There's there's not a lot of hope for you know that degree of transparency. I would not, because like. Now that I like understand more about how like corporations work, because I've never actually worked in one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would not. I I would not. Um, because I was talking to some lawyers about you know how internal investigations work, and they're never publicized. You know, they never are. So it's just like well, what? But but here's the thing: they it wasn't, and then this shit gets leaked. And so then it's and then it's big. It's like they were like, but it's unverified th- shit, right? But but from from th- from a from a from a from a subjective party that has an agenda. True, but has it has it made things better over there? <laughs> like, well, part in of, terms part of, of the, power play, maybe, maybe not. Well, I'm, uh, but it, it seems like Christian Horner is like Leonardo DiCaprio right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he seems pretty. It seems well, like until, he might have won this thing. Well, until it maybe. It, but there is, I mean, there's shit is circling. There's shit is going to hit the fan. It's like right now, it, it's... What do you mean it's going to hit the fan? It's been perpetually hit. I the know, fan. but it, it's going to land. We don't know. We still don't know where, like how it's going to land. It's like currently it's hitting the fucking fan, but we don't know like what the, the fucking remnants of it is going to be. Well, apparently Helmet met with um, Mintzloff. Yeah. And they said they, they, they kissed and made up. Right. They so patched we'll up see. their thing. We'll see. And, and, and I mean... God damn it. You might think Max is an asshole. You might not like Max. You might not like Helmut Marco. You might not even like Red Bull. But how but think about this. Max Verstappen went out here and said he said it multiple times. He's like basically said Helmut goes, I go. Yeah. I am hitching my wagon to an eighty three year old guy. Yeah. And saying he is the most important yeah. guy to me. Yeah. You know, think about who else would do something like that? Think about like, like how where loyalty is in his in no his, his loyalties virtues. His loyalties are fucking strong. It's yeah. just a question of like whether those loyalties. I because I don't. I'm not th- speaking about whether or not he should be loyal to the guy. It's just it's just like think about like he he sees Helmet as this guy probably who who gave him his shot. Yeah 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 and yeah yeah. He feels he feels indebted to him, but where you see. Time and time again, you know, drivers who are given their shot by people that, you know, they, you know, just, just, does Lewis have a good feeling about Ron Dennis? I'm sure he does. Yeah. 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 But at a certain point, he was like, right. I got to get the fuck out of here. Right. right, right. I got to do what's best for me. And right. that's not a, a knock on Lewis. Right. But, but it's also, could it's you not, imagine, it, could you imagine if yeah. Lewis, it was, was like, I ride or die with Ron Dennis? Yeah. Yeah. But you it know? also feels a bit like it's not just like, it's that's not just Max. It feels like it's like it's Max. It's Yoss. There is an element of this whole thing where like Yoss sticking his nose into this situation. There's there's talks well, we around. We just don't know. There's we just don't know. Wh- people who's speculating. Who. There's there's people speculating about other shit with Yoss around this whole situation. But like the fact that like it's it's like it's Yoss. Yoss's friend is Max's manager mm-hmm. and like they've hitched their fucking wagons who's got in there first but like these factions have been established within Red Bull and like Yas is a major player in that and there is a degree where like right and we talk know, about this on the Patreon yeah which is if Yas is honoring what his son wants 
mm-hmm. then I don't see anything yeah, wrong yeah. with but that. But I don't think but I, I don't think that that's what's happening. Do you really think in your heart that that's what's happening? I think that Yas is like I would hope that Max held Max. Yeah, you, you hope, dude. But like, think about the dynamic here. Max has been given a lot of chances, right, publicly to distance himself from what his dad says. Right. And he hasn't done it. Right. So it leads me to believe that he agrees with him, whether or not, sub, like, whether or not. I don't know, dude. I just think, I think, I, I, I don't think that that's necessarily wrong, but I think that, like, it's, or, your, or, it's or, your dad. You look up to your fucking dad and, like, oh you my just God. kind of go You know how my dad says shit that I'm, like, putting. No, dude. Yeah, I know, but you don't have that. T- it's like th- their dynamic and relationship is one of like he's been managing his career his whole life. Yes, he's indebted to his dad. He follows. He, you know, he sticks by his dad's done a bunch of shit, and he's like stuck stuck by him the whole time. He he has a reverie and a, and a feeling about his dad that even though he's his dad's out out here in the press, like making arguably making this whole situation even more volatile and worse that he's just kind of like well my dad's not a liar you know my dad that's my dad my dad in my gut i just feel like and i'm not even saying that max necessarily like disagrees or feels like i don't care about marco but my dad likes him but like but I he's think so enmeshed in what his, his dad his that, dad's more into the pol- his dad's more obsessed with the political nature of this whole thing than max is and now it's like he's making it difficult for him it's a bit of the lavar ball thing Right. And you're and right. I get the LeVar Ball thing. And it's like. Yes, these kids might agree with their dad, but they've never they've been so enmeshed with their dad that they've never really they've never really individuated. Right. Necessarily. Um, no, they, he never has. I mean, L- Lewis fired Anthony. You know, people have been like, is Max ever going to. And it's just like Max ain't doing that shit. No matter what Yoss does like those. It's like it's. Yeah, the, but, but here's the thing. Max might not fire Yas, mm-hmm. but he might. But th- he talks about leaving the sport all the time, mm-hmm. and I think it. I think it has more to. I, I'm just speculating here. Yeah, but that might reestablish the relationship, like because Lewis Lewis fired his dad because he wanted his dad. Mm-hmm. He didn't want. He didn't want to be working with his dad anymore. And I, think maybe want, back- and I think he wanted to level up his career. I think he was like, to, for me to get into this other phase of my career, like his dad was holding it back. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know what they were fighting about, really. All I know is that the story was, is like, I want, you can be my father, you can be my manager. Right, Which one right, is right, it? Right, I would right. rather you be my father. Yes. Now Those distinctions don't seem to exist in the Versailles. No, but the household. thing is, they will exist if Max quits. When he retires, yeah. And that way, then his dad just becomes his dad. Yeah, sure. So... Maybe that's a that's I mean that could be part of it. Who knows? But um, that could be how the those relationships are normalized again or mm. made. Um, is, is that he is not in business anymore? He's not in the racing business anymore. Um, I think about like I think about things. You know, you think about things you used to do with your dad that would just like aggravate you you know or stress you out and mm-hmm. like it's like you don't do them anymore and it's like you're better for it I'm trying to think like you know thank god i don't play sports anymore my dad used to stress me out yeah sure you know what i mean thank god um thank god i'm not in school anymore yeah yeah I don't have grades i don't have grades for my parents to fucking you know yeah you imagine could you imagine if you were living at home and like till you it, it, till this latest well actually you did live at home for yeah i did it longer was rough <laughs> right you were still in the maze in which your parents judged you and yeah, evaluated sure. you right, whether, right, right and for max it wasn't school it it was it was motorsport yeah and he's still in that but he's like but i don't know i don't know if it's like that easy that it's like then then you leave and then like you just stop having the dynamic that you've had for your entire life like it's a little hard to turn that shit off i i think that there's an it's a it's an idealistic point to think like and then once and then once i'm out of formula 1 then like my dad's not a, a you know intensely looming and oppressive force in my life where it's like if max starts goes into WEC and it starts his own company do you don't th- you don't think joss is like i think i feel like Yas is going to be a part of every single part of that. Maybe, you know, maybe that is what Max is thinking and that's in there, but I think it's a little hard to just like turn that shit off. I don't know. 
It's such it's his relationship is fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating. We gotta we gotta get an access to that to the second yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. He has a new the, the, his doc. But you know what you hope is, and we said this on Patreon. What you hope, yeah. What you're hoping is that Max. What I hope in my heart is that Max was like, "Get me out of here." Right. Get rid of Christian. Yeah. I don't care if you have to shoot your way out of this. Right. Thing. Right. Right. And and then Yas is like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to get rid of Christian. I know, but, but it's Max, gonna get the, messy. I know, but it's gonna Max get messy. Was, but the Max is in the press being like, you know, like the car's doing well, and I'm, I don't see myself actually like, I don't, I'm not actually leaving. So I just, I don't actually think that's what, what's but, happening. But he also said, if Helmet leaves, I leave. Right. And then, but and then, what's interesting? They, and then Christian's been in the press being like, no one's bigger than the team. He said that like a right, bunch l- of times. Like, go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be a. There'll be a line out the door to take your seat. Yeah, this shit is this fucking crazy. Fucking crazy. Cra- this shit is fucking crazy. And the season's gonna be boring as fuck. So it's like this. Is, I mean, <laughs> this, this is, is this is you know. And we t- we said this on the Patreon. But we'll say it here. We subscribe to the Patreon if you want to listen to our whole episode about this and the idea of Max going to Mercedes and all that. But like that, this it's fascinating that this dynasty at the peak of their powers is self-destructing. Right. Usually usually there's a dip and then you self-destruct and the and the yeah, thing usually we likened you, it to yeah, yeah, yep. was the Lakers. Yes. Because the LA Lakers with Kobe and Shaq would have just beaten everybody. Yes. But it was because of ego. Yeah. And because, you know, Kobe wanted to be number one. Yes. And so, these warring and these warring factions. Yes. Yeah. These warring factions within the thing that have now created this huge fucking mess of a situation and that and that it is also kind of like sad and fucking depressing that like this person who brought this complaint in the first place seems on some level to be at like have been used as a pawn and then like it had not worked out and now this person is like suffered on the other side of this i mean if red bull suspended her and for 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 um, no good reason, I right. mean that's like a massive yeah. fucking civil suit. Yes. So no, that's uh that I mean this is gonna be ongoing. We're gonna be continue. I mean this is just playing out in the fucking public eye. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We got an off week next week. We have the man, the myth, the legend, Scotty James coming on the pod. Yes. That's right. Lance Stroll's brother-in-law, Chloe Stroll's husband, but maybe most importantly, Lauren Stroll's (laughs) son-in-law. We ask him what it's like to be the son-in-law to the scariest man um, in the world, maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. It was a great episode, so that's a great one coming up next week. And then we got... And it was recorded a couple weeks ago, way before Lance hit the wall. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's was, right. We were still in the, it was in before the fun the, yeah. in the fun time of before off the season started. Um Fuck Mary Kill, the real podium, which was Perez, Leclerc, and who got fourth today? Was it It was, it was Piastri. Piastri. Oh that's oh <laughs> I'm marrying Piastri, obviously. <laughs> Gotta marry Piastri. Gotta marry Piastri. Gotta marry Piastri. Because you know you you know, you check in when you check in yeah. and you get, we get to do our own things. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, although he's not going to hold my umbrella for me. No. He's going to no. make sure I get fucking wet. Yeah. I got to bring my own umbrella. Yeah. I got to be a self-sufficient king. Yeah, you got to be your own person. I got to be your own person. Um, it's just... I'm going gonna, f- I'm gonna to fuck Paris, kill Leclerc. <laughs> just just to be different. Even though Leclerc was looking hot, fucking hot today with his with the, with the, with the goatee. Mm. He was looking like m- more like adult. He was looking like a man. Yeah, he looks a little filled out. He, he was, he's looking a little bit um, thicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little bit m- muscle, muscular. I gotta say, Perez was also looking pretty good today. And mm. I feel like I don't know. I feel like for he was one, he was feeling good. One about, night with, about, about Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one night with Perez would be fun. I'm not sure if one night with Charles would be fun. No, Charles, you need Charles. You need. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think Charles can handle a one night stand. Yeah. Maybe he could. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He'd get all emotional. Yeah. And weird. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 what I'm going with this week. Yeah. All right, you motherfucking bankers. We love you. Goodbye, bankers. Goodbye, bankers. Uh, uh,